Reese's is named after its inventor, Harry Burnett H.B. Reese. He first created his Tasty Cups in 1928, but before he ever came up with the idea of making candy, he was forced to work through a long list of jobs to try and provide for his 16 kids. Yes, you heard that right, 16! Harry's road to success was anything but straight, and along the way, he had numerous obstacles to overcome. This is his story. Harry Burnett Reese was born in 1879. He was of Welsh and English descent, and he grew up on a farm in Pennsylvania. Harry was an only child, and he wanted to try and help his parents out as best he could. And when it came to earning money, he knew how to get creative. As a young boy, he started out by farming the land, but soon enough, he began carving out more lucrative sources of income. He started milking cows as this was a quicker way to earn cash, and he even built a pond in which he raised frogs that he then sold to nearby restaurants. What a savvy little kid! After a childhood filled with numerous entrepreneurial stints, Harry got married in 1900. At the time, he was 21 years old, and it didn't take long before their little family began expanding, and expanding, and expanding. In total, the couple had 16 kids together, 8 daughters and 8 sons. And soon enough, Harry was, not surprisingly, struggling to support his ever-growing family. It helped that Harry's wife was from a well-off family, but Harry had always been a true family man. And not only did his mother live with him for the rest of her life, but so did her two sisters. As you can guess, the house was always packed. And during a typical Reese family supper, at least 20 family members would be present. And if friends and relatives were invited too, then that number went up to more than 40 people. However cozy this may have been, this also meant more money was needed. And in an attempt to provide for his massive family, Harry was forced to take on all manner of odd jobs. From managing the fishing operations of his father-in-law's cannery business to overseeing a dairy farm and working a factory job, there was nothing Harry wouldn't do to support his growing family. But this still wasn't enough, and the family kept struggling. Then, in 1916, Harry read an employment ad in the newspaper. Milton S. Hershey was seeking people to manage his many dairy farms in the Hershey, Pennsylvania area. As you can probably guess, Milton was none other than the founder of the famous Hershey Chocolate family. And while Harry did not yet know it at the time, taking this job would change his life forever. After working for Hershey for a year, Henry was asked to manage a dairy farm called the Round Barn. As it was an experimental farm, his boss, Milton Hershey, visited every two weeks to check how things were going. The farm used new milking machines, which were much more efficient than milking by hand. But they were also expensive, and by 1919, Milton decided to close the whole thing down. Whether Harry quit his job or got fired is not entirely certain, but one thing we do know, this time he decided to take a new approach. And instead of relying on others for a job, he took matters into his own hands by forming a new business. He called it the R&R Candy Company, and he made milk chocolate-covered almonds and raisins, and then sold them to local stores. Henry knew he needed high-quality manufacturing equipment to boost his company's potential. One year later, he changed the name to the Superior Chocolate and Confectionery Company, and to raise money, he began issuing stock. Surprisingly, he managed to raise today's equivalent of $290,000. Not bad, but the business ultimately failed nonetheless. And under pressure to support his many children, and with yet another baby on the way, a 40-year-old Harry felt hopeless. After his early candy venture failed, Henry took a paper mill job. He then began a second job as a butcher, and he also had a third job canning vegetables. To say that he was busy would be an understatement. In 1921, his well-off father-in-law had some great news, though. He had purchased a home for Harry's growing family. 
Would things finally begin to look up? Once they managed to secure a roof over the family's head, Harry quit his three jobs and went back to working for Hershey. He started out in the shipping department and was soon promoted to foreman. Money was still tight, however, and he decided to do an additional job on the side. While his earlier chocolate project had failed, he wanted to give it another try, and he began making a variety of confectionery products from his basement. He made hard candy, chocolate-covered nuts and raisins, and mints, as well as two popular candy bars that he invented. He always made sure to use fresh ingredients, and he coated all of his creations with Hershey's chocolate. Fast forward a couple of years, and Harry's enterprise was doing much better than expected. Sure, he was still working from his basement, but his candies were popular, and demand kept increasing. Due to this success, Harry began taking the business even more seriously, and he set up the H.B. Reese Candy Company. For many years, his enterprise was doing well, but it still didn't have a blockbuster product, and the profits were meager. But then, one day, in 1928, everything changed. Five years after Harry set up his company, he went on a sales trip to Harrisburg. There, he chatted with a store owner, who told him that he struggled to keep chocolate-covered peanut butter candy in stock. The store's owner's supplier couldn't keep up with demand, and the candy was flying off the shelves faster than he could restock it. To continue fulfilling his customers' desires, the man asked Harry if he could help. Perhaps he could make something similar? Harry didn't have to think twice, and without hesitation, he said yes. He left the store and immediately purchased a massive 50-pound can of peanut butter. He rushed home and began experimenting by covering a peanut butter ball in chocolate. The creation was tasty, but difficult to make, and producing the balls on a large scale would have been nearly impossible. After some thinking, Harry came up with a better idea. What if he would use traditional cups instead of balls? By that time, chocolate-covered peanut butter cups had already been around for a while. They were sold commercially as early as 1907, but for some reason, they had never become very popular. Up until then, they were just one of many candies sold at drugstores. But this was all about to change. To ensure that he made the best cups in town, Harry began making his own peanut butter. And one thing that made his cups so tasty was the distinct way he roasted the peanuts until they were almost burnt. Harry simply called his cups peanut butter cups, or penny cups, as they were sold for just one penny each. They were an immediate hit, and people loved the delicious, salty, yet sweet treats. Not much later, Harry was already selling five-pound boxes to local retailers. And by 1935, business was going so well that he paid off all his debts and quit his factory job at the Hershey Company. Emboldened by his success, Harry felt ready to set out on his own to make a living creating candy. And he was finally able to fully concentrate on his own business. The company was running smoothly for many years, but then World War II happened, and with it came a severe scarcity of supplies and economic hardship. When the U.S. entered the war, sugar was rationed, and although his former boss, Milton Hershey, lent Harry sugar, it wasn't enough. In a last-ditch attempt to save his business, Harry eliminated his other products and focused solely on the peanut butter cup. It was his most popular product, after all, and in addition, it was also the candy that needed the least amount of sugar. It would turn out to be the best decision he ever made. As Harry's business boomed, other candy companies began producing their own cups too. But despite the competition, Harry's cups kept growing rapidly in popularity, and he continued to do well. In fact, things were going so well that he decided to build a huge factory in Hershey. The building was finished in 1957, but unfortunately, Harry didn't live to see it with his own eyes. He died a few months earlier from a heart attack, just a few days before his 77th birthday. Harry's death plunged the company into chaos. He had left his daughters out of the will, 
and instead left the company to his six remaining sons. And those sons didn't exactly get along well. While Harry's children were fighting for control, the company finally entered the modern era, with an automated production line. By the late 1950s, Reese's had become a respected national brand. Sales soared to over $15 million a year, but the brothers continued fighting. The eldest brothers wanted to sell the company, but the younger ones wanted to keep it in the family. One day, Hershey heard the rumors about a possible resale and quickly reached out. After all, a merger made sense. The companies were in the same town, they used the same chocolate, and their founders had been good friends. So after seven long years of arguing and fighting, Harry's son sold the family business to Hershey. With the sale, the sons received roughly a 5% share in the Hershey company, and they got 666,000 shares of Hershey's stock which was valued at nearly $24 million at the time. That's more than $200 million in today's equivalent. And when you keep in mind that Hershey is worth more than $20 billion today, all you can do is hope that the sons pass their precious stock onto their own kids. By 1969, Reese's peanut butter cups were Hershey's best-selling product. They were selling more than 300 million cups a year. And after launching that iconic, Hey, you got peanut butter on my chocolate. You got peanut butter on my chocolate. Ad campaign in the early 70s, Reese's Cups were not just Hershey's top product anymore, but also the best-selling candy in the whole US. Today, Reese's peanut butter cups are still being enjoyed by millions of people every year. The mouth-watering cups continue to prosper under Hershey's, and over the years, dozens of variations have been created. Head into any supermarket anywhere in the US and you see tons of Reese's products. From big cups, miniatures, and minis, to dark chocolate, white chocolate, marshmallow, caramel, and hazelnut cream flavors. Or what about Reese's cookies, Reese's pieces, or Reese's puff cereal? But however big the Reese's brand may be, Reese's peanut butter cups remain number one. And outside of the US, plenty of people love them too. That's probably exactly how HB envisioned his company to be. After all, he once wisely said, If you make a product that both young and old enjoy, then your potential customers are limited only by the number of people on Earth. This was the story of Harry Burnett Reese and his delicious peanut butter cups. Determined to provide for his big family, the savvy entrepreneur would do whatever it took to make ends meet. And by doing so, he eventually created an impressive and mouth-watering legacy that has lasted to this day. Reese's peanut butter cups were handcrafted in Harry's basement nearly one century ago. And although they are now sold all over the world, the essence of the original cup has endured. And something tells me Harry would be proud. Did you know about the story behind these tasty cups? And have you ever had one? Share it in the comments. And let us know if you have a business in mind that you would like us to cover next. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and don't forget to check out our channel for more inspiring business videos.